Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make a detailed video about goldfish developmental evolutionary biology. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evo devo. In the previous video, I discussed the segmentation stage. This time, I will continue from the point onward. If you haven't seen the previous video, I'll put the link in the description, so please refer to it. In the second half of the segmentation period, the number of somites will exceed 20. And if it progresses further than this stage, it will be the pharyngeal period. The number of somites continue to change even after becoming a pharyngeal stage embryo. However, using body segment as a staging index is no longer realistic. This is because it is very difficult to count more than 20 somites while observing a moving embryo under a microscope. Also upon reaching this stage, the embryo is curled up inside the egg. This makes it impossible to observe the details of embryo inside. Therefore, when observing embryo from this stage, remove the egg membrane and observe it. And it is necessary to distinguish the developmental stage of this period using as a staging index. The staging index for this developmental stage is introduced in a paper on the zebrafish staging table. This paper has been cited by many researchers since it was published in 1995. Already at this stage, an elaborated developmental stage table has been written based on the easy-to-observe staging index. And of course, the staging index for describing the developmental stage of the pharyngeal embryonic stage is also drawn properly. According to this paper, the lateral line primordium can be used as a staging index. This means that the positional relationship between the posterior end of the lateral line primordium and the somite serves as a staging index for the pharyngeal stage embryos. This staging index is named prime. However, unfortunately, it is very difficult to find this lateral line primordium in goldfish embryo. First of all, it is not easy to find it with an ordinary stereo microscope. It is necessary to identify the location of the posterior end of the lateral line primordium and simultaneously count the number of somites. In that case, it is necessary to observe with high magnification to find the lateral line primordium and to understand the positional relationship of the position in the whole embryo. Furthermore, it is difficult to observe the embryo body while constantly changing the magnification of the microscope. In fact, I haven't seen this staging index called the PRIME used much in research since 1995 when this paper was published. Probably I think nobody used it because it was too hard to observe. And for these reasons, we decided to establish a unique staging index that describes the developmental stage of the pharyngeal stage embryos. It is a staging index called the otic vesicular closure. The staging index uses the diameter of the inner ear and the ratio from the anterior end of the inner ear to the posterior end of the eye. With this staging index, developmental stages can be described with a photograph on the embryo taken from the side with the eyes and the inner ear in focus. In goldfish at this time, as the developmental progresses, the distance between the inner ear and the eye shrinks and at the same time, the size of the inner ear increases. Therefore, by measuring the diameter of the inner ear and the distance from the anterior end of the inner ear to the back of the eyes, it is possible to calculate the ratio. For example, the ratios can be represented as 25% OVC or 35% OVC. Thankfully, this staging index was so easy to use that it was also cited in research on other fish species. So let's take a look at the characteristics of embryos at the different stages. First of all, it is a 25 OVC stage embryo. 
the trunk seems to be transparent overall, but the eyes are clearly black pigmented. In addition, pectoral fin bat, that is the part where the pectoral fin is formed in popping out. A black pigment also appears between the pectoral fin bat and the inner ear. And if you look at the tail, you can see the fin fold, the membrane that forms the middle line. We will now examine the 35 OBC stage embryo, which has further developed. Until now, it seems that the embryo was bowing with its head deeply lowered, but it seems that the head is rising a little. And the distance between the inner ear and the eyes was shrunk a little. The black pigment also noticeably darker. Black pigments can be also seen near the notochord of the trunk. And the 60% OVC embryos. It looks like the inner ear is closer to the eyes than before. The black pigment is also clearly darkened throughout the body. And you can also see that the thin fold earlier, which has not so obviously until now has increased. These images use embryos with the chorion removed for observation. But if true, these embryos are inside the egg. In other words, the fin fold for swimming is prepared from the stage in the egg. Furthermore, the developmental progress is rapidly to the 65% of EC stage. It looks like the head is standing up. The black pigment is also getting darker and the pectoral fin bat is even more apparent. If you examine this tip in more detail, you can see that the distribution of black pigment in this area is slightly different from other parts. This is where the skeleton of tail fin will eventually form. At this time, black pigment can be seen all over the body, but this part does not not turn black. Later at this stage, the pharynx became more visible. For more detailed examination, let's look at the tissue section from a 60% OVC embryo. These are tissue sections of goldfish embryo cut in the transverse plane. The pharynx inner ear and hydrobrain are visible. The eyes are also solid and you can see that not only the lens but also multiple layers are formed and the black pigment of the eyes is formed in the retina. Differentiated sarcomere can be seen on the both sides of the trunk neural tube and the notochord. Look at the tissue section image cut in the horizontal plane. That way you can clearly see the muscle fibers. You can clearly see that the appearance in different forms that the segmentation stage that you saw last time. Let's take a closer look at the tissue section image cut in the transverse plane at the fin fold around the tail. It can be seen that the epithelial cells form a fin fold along the middle of the body. As you can see by comparing it with the pectoral fin primordium. Although both are fin primordia, their histological features are completely different. While this fin fold is made up of a membrane made up of very thin epithelial cells, the primordia of the pectoral fin are filled with many mesenchymal cells. Well, when you come this far, the embryo finally being to hatch. The hatching stage goldfish embryo can be divided into three stages. Stages called long peck, peck fin and protruding mouth. Of these, long peck and peck fin are divided based on the shape of their pectoral fins. Proto stage can be clearly distinguished from other stage by the shape of the head. Let us examine in detail. The pectoral fin of the embryo is transparent, so it is difficult to see the shape when viewed from the side. So let's look at it from behind. The differences between the long peck and the peck fin stage embryos are not so big except for the pectoral fins, but the proto stage is clearly different. Compare the position of the heart at the different developmental stages. The proto stage has a heart positioned differently from the others, right?
At this stage, the heart is located in the throat area, and it feels like my heart is under my throat. It is very strange to hear that the heart is contained under the throat. This is because the positional relationship between the head, the shoulder, and the chest and the arm is significantly different between fish and humans. The yolk is still present at each of these stages. So even if they hatch at any of these stages, they can survive on the yolk for some time. At this stage, embryo begins to dissolve the egg membrane by secreting hatching enzyme that dissolve the egg membrane and they can move their body. The timing of hatching is determined by multiple factors. The individual that breaks the egg membrane and come out is called larvae, not embryo. After listening to this explanation of embryo is in the hatching stage, some of you may have questions. Is that really how we define embryos and larvae just like that? Now let us examine the distinction between embryos and the larvae in more detail. In both our paper, the embryo and larvae are divided into period in which they are inside the egg membrane and the period in which they are break through the egg membrane and emerge outside. Then, if someone asked me, do they represent the stage of larvae or embryos, I would say that they represent both. And as I said earlier, the timing at which the range breaks through the egg membrane is determined by hatching enzyme and other factors. In addition, hatching enzymes also affect the surrounding egg membrane. When that happens, the density of the embryo also affects the timing of hatching. In fact, the timing of hatching does not exactly correspond to the developmental stage of the embryo. Therefore. These three stages are categorized into hatching period. In other words, the developmental stage table and the staging index are based solely on human visual recognition. However, there are still many unknown as to whether this developmental stage table based on visual recognition is something that exists only in the human mind. I think there will be an opportunity to explain these evil devil specific topics later in another video. Okay, now that we, we finish explaining the embryonic development of goldfish, next time we will look at the developmental stage of hatched larvae and see it more detail how larvae grow into adult fish, so please look forward to it. It is time to say goodbye, I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.